Hello everyone and welcome back to TGR, that's Gaming Robbo. Today guys, we're going through Zero to Hero, the third season, 2003 to 2004 season review. So without further ado guys, we're going to be going through all of the main part of the fixtures, showing you how we ended up within the first division in our first season and show you what we're going to be looking forward to in the next season. So let's get started. Let's get the ball rolling and show you how we got on during the course of this season. So our first league game of the season in Division 1, we lost to Gillingham 2-0. It was a bit of an unfortunate start to the season as it shows once again we're a bit lacklustre when it comes to shooting at front of goal. We didn't have to wait long for our first win in Division 1. The first win came in our second game in Division 1, beating Cardiff 2-0 at Playmore. Now the goal came from Michael Dunwell and Kevin Haslam. League Cup action, first round. Really been looking forward to this cup purely because we haven't done well in the past seasons. I'm hoping and I'm praying that we will be able to deliver the cup or get quite far within this cup tournament. This is what happened after the 90 minutes. Losing on penalties to Barnsley 4-2. Once again, we're dumped out of the League Cup at such an early stage. Bit of a shame, bit of a hard pill to swallow, but at the end of the day, we've got we've got to concentrate on Division 1. We've got to try and concentrate on getting a really good cup run within the FA Cup. 3-3. Now, within this game, we were 3-0 up at half-time. 3-1 up, sorry, at half-time, but we were 3-0 up um, just before Wickham scored a goal, just before the stroke of half-time. And then we go on to draw 3 all with Wickham. It just shows you how much of a calamity we've become in defence. And it's something that we had to sort out really, really quickly. Really impressive win, beating Derby County 3-1 at Playmore. As you can see, Dunwell, Carathus... And this guy, Eldar Hadzimif, I can't pronounce his name, I do apologise, I cannot pronounce it, but he had a really good season and I was really, really impressed with him, uh, with him playing as an attacking midfielder role. But the main focus is we beat Derby County 3-1 and we weren't too wasteful when it comes to our chances in this game. We drew 4 all with West Ham United at Upton Park. As you can see, 3-1 up at half-time, we let another two-goal lead slip from out of our fingers and we go from a three points to one point. Something that we really need to be focusing on defending-wise during the course of the season if we want to actually make a real go at chasing promotion to the Premier League in our first attempt. FA Cup third round. And we lose to Wickham Wanderers 1-0. You look at the team that we put out. There was nothing wrong with that team. We had a really strong team. We've had a very good team. We were just not able to penetrate Wickham's um, goal. We just weren't able to do anything at all. It just felt like we didn't turn up for this game. So once again, we're out of another cup tournament. And now the only thing that we have to focus on now is Division 1 and fighting for promotion. We finally got a victory. This is the middle of March now and we had not won a single game from the 20th of December to the 13th of March. It was a long time. I'm surprised that I did not get the sack during this time frame. But at the end of the day, we beat Rotherham 2-1 and the main focus now is trying not to get relegated from Division 1. We beat Millwall 1-0 and it it really does look like now within this season that our promotion playoffs is coming towards an end. It looks like that dream of getting promoted for a third season in a row is coming to an end purely because of poor results, poor tactics and probably poor selections uh, during the course of the season. But nonetheless, we're still going to be fighting for a decent 
place within Division 1. Four games to go. We now won two games on the bounce, which is the first time that's happened since just before Christmas. This is really, really good to see that we're able to actually start having a string of good victories, a string of good results, starting obviously beating Rotherham and now obviously beating Burnley. But the season's still not over yet, so we're still pushing for a high place in Division 1. A lucky victory in my eyes because I feel that Manchester City played a lot better than what we did during the course of the game. Now, as you can see, it shows that we did win 3-2. But looking back on it, I think a draw would have been good enough for Man City. A draw is what they did deserve. But at the end of the day, we did win. And I'm not going to argue with that up front at the end of the day. Our last home game of the, of the Division 1 season. And we end it with a 1-0 victory. Michael Dunwell finishes a good result. A good run of form, in fact. Four games in a row that we've won. And we were looking like we were getting a really high, respectable place in Division 1. And just missing out on the playoff zone. Last game of Division 1 season. And we lose to Nottingham Forest. This loss really did affect us towards the the end of this season. And when we come towards the league tables round, you will see exactly how bad we've gone from going from 8th position to just missing out on playoff zone, which is where we were at the start of the game, to this place now. 11th in the league. 11th. It is absolutely shocking. We started off really, you know, okay, you know, trying to feel ourselves into the into Division One. Then we started doing really well, starting to actually have a string of results, and it looked like, you know, there could be some there could be some hope here. And then the inconsistency of letting goals in left, right, and centre, drawing four all with West Ham United. Drawing three all with Wick and Wanderers. There was many other accounts in during the during the course of the season that we just let goals in left, right, and centre. It was horrific. It really was. And losing games at silly times of the match, as you can see, that we had finished on minus two for goal difference, which is like I said in one of my other videos that we need to start looking at, you know, defensive duties in uh, a better better way. But uh, what I'm going to show you now, guys, actually, is if, um, during the first two seasons where we um, obviously played during the season one review, season two review, I want to show you some of the statistics, uh, how the how the team played, um, how the players played as well. And, uh, and then with that, once we get through to the first season review stats, the second season review stats, then we'll go over the last bits uh, during this video and uh, I'll be then getting myself prepared and focused for Season 4, our second season in Division 1. So let's show you the stats for the first two seasons. So here is the first season stats for my Talk United team Zero to Hero. So as you can see, uh, majority of the players playing roughly around the 40 to 50 games per mark obviously depending on certain players that didn't fit the first team caliber of course but uh, as you can see Chris Brandon 16 goals 24 games and that's just him playing as, a, as an attacker midfielder on his own not that bad really is it uh, Svera Svensson scoring three goals but assisting 16 times cracking isn't it to Madeira say no more about him Michael Dunwell, 21 goals, 14 assists. Dan Nardiello, 8 goals and 5, and five assists in one full start and 19 sub-appearances. Um, and on the bottom half, obviously as you can see, a lot of these players you know, didn't really feature that much uh, in all honesty, but... You know, man of the match obviously went. Most man of the matches went to two Madeira. Highest passing rate was uh, one of my main defenders to start off with the season, Steve Woods. But uh, after that, you know, Des Walker 
who played the majority of games, nearly all of them, at 81%. Uh, highest tackling per game, Brian Healy. But other than that, it's Des Walker followed by Kit Simons. Dribbling, Chris Brandon, you know, once again, it's just amazing. We'll ignore Kit Simon's shot target, so we'll go next one with Des Walker, 87%. I mean, two Madeiras was 66, it's still good, and he was playing nearly every game. And highest average rating, you know, it goes to two Madeira. So obviously this is the first season, so let me show you what the second season stats look like before I show you the third. So the end of the second season of Zero to Hero for Talk United, once again, Chris Brandon, he was one of the main guys who played nearly every game, scoring 13 goals and 23 assists this season. Mike Duff, you know, obviously he played 57, so did done well. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how many goals each player scores. So done well, as you can see, 42 goals away from two Madeira's uh, Sun, uh, Shadow, you know, so it shows that Dunwell is a fantastic player on this game, closely followed by Dan Nardiello and Javan as well. Uh, most assists, obviously, as you know, it's uh, Chris Brandon, closely somewhat followed by Simone Barone, uh, Dunwell, and Javan once again. Man of the Matches awards, obviously, Dunwell done really well. No pun intended, but he done really well this season. Pass is complete. I'll be interested to see this. So Kit Simons, he only, he's only played half the season. So Hayden Fox played 44 times at 81%. Uh, Wayne Carlisle at 80%. Steve Haslam, 78%. So you know, that's that's really, really good. You know, and uh, my tactics, obviously, is you guys would see from my formations videos what I've been using for Talk United. Highest tackles um, percentage rate. So you're looking at Hayden Fox, 2.7 tackles per game. Wayne Carlisle, 2.5. Steve Haslam, 2. So it's still really, really good, as you can see. Now, the dribble, dribble rate, Chris Brandon, once again, is up the top. You know, I mean, you look at his, his stats. He doesn't look amazing, but he plays fantastic. Uh, shot target percentage rate will ignore Kevin McDonald because he's only played seven starts, three subs. So Steve Haslam, he played majority of the season, 81%, followed by Kit Simons. Hayden Fox, 66 and then obviously Dunwell, who's played up front as a sole striker for the majority of the season, uh, at 63%. So not that bad at all. And highest average rating, Mike Dunwell, 7.82 say no more you mean you know we, we we let go of two madeira this season and michael dunwell was the main striker for the team and you know he's clearly stepped up clearly stepped up okay guys so like i said we we didn't do particularly well in the first season first year in division one obviously the teams that you can see within our league that we need to be looking out for uh you got coventry Charlton, Crystal Palace, Fulham, uh, Nottingham Forest after they beat us 3-2 at the last game of the season. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday, obviously Watford, West Ham, Wimbledon, Wolves. You know, there's a lot of big teams in this league. A lot of big teams. And it's and it's something that we need to be we need to be careful of, of course. And uh, what I'm what I am aiming to do is to try and get to the playoff zones by the end of this season. And uh, hopefully we can make a good cup run from it as well. But um, what we're going to do is just going to go over one last thing with you guys. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get the ball rolling for the season four review of Zero to Hero. Okay, so lastly, guys, during the course of these three seasons, um, obviously I'm trying to... Get obviously my club, Talk United, from the lowest one of the lowest leagues, Division Three, to the Premier League and fighting for that Premiership title. Now, as you can see at the moment in time, I am ranked 27 in England, um, obviously for manager's reputation. Now, if we look at all nations, yeah, I'm a long way off still. 
I'm just under, just um, I'm just over, sorry, 1,100. So it shows you I've still got a lot of work to do. I mean, for Christ's sake, I'm behind William II's manager, uh, Morocco national team manager. So it shows you I've still got a lot of work to do to try and get Talk United to the standards that I would love them to be. Um, it's not going to be any quick fix whatsoever. It's going to take a long, long time. And hopefully I'll be able to mould uh, the team as I go forward uh, to hopefully be in Premiership winners one day. Um, if it won't be with the cropper players I have now, hopefully it will be with uh, a young set of regens um, that will come through the system very, very soon. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, we've still got a lot of work to do. Uh, so hopefully, as I said, season four, we'll hit the playoff zones and uh, hopefully we'll have a good cup run with either it being the FA Cup or the League Cup. So, guys, that's it for Zero to Hero, the season review for 2003 and 2004. So just a quick highlight, just a quick uh, catch up with uh, with it all. Obviously, we finished sec we finished 11th in the first division in our first season there. Got knocked out of the first round of the League Cup. Got knocked out of the third round of the FA Cup. So there's no real saving grace as to uh, to try and keep ourselves motivated for that. But at the end of the day, I mean, we are looking at a fair few Bosman rulings. Obviously, as you can see, uh, Michael Stewart and Darren Huckabee. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to bring those guys into my team. I have tried to get old Sebastian as well. But uh, no, it's not. They, it just wasn't. It wasn't going to happen at the end of the day, unfortunately. But guys, if you have liked this video, please make sure you smash like on the video. And of course, as well, if you are new to our channel, please make sure you do subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that notification bell as well. But apart from that, guys, thank you very much for your time. I look forward to seeing you at the 2004 and 2005 season review for Zero to Hero. With TGR, that's Game and Robbo. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. Stay safe and subscribe.